I was just working on the script for my set survey part two tutorial when, like all writers do, I got distracted. This time by Discord. When I heard Chroma K send me a private message. Would you maybe have a bit of free time and goodwill to check one of my tracks with partial scan geo alignment to camera? Is my camera solve funky or my photo scanned geo or I messed up everything? I don't think he messed up everything. But let's take a look at his scene. There are a few things I notice about the scene right off the bat. I see 3D points on the water. The shot already has lens distortion baked into it through the, the lens workflow, which you can find right here. That's all good, but it's not something you really want to do until the shot is really done and until you've got a good alignment in your scene. Other things, yeah, the, the geometry does not line up. You can see here, this geometry probably should go on that rooftop. This dome doesn't line up with that. This, what, that doesn't line up to anything. On the top of the wall, you can see these parapets in the wall. Those don't line up. I can see them here. This one kind of does, but. So the whole thing doesn't line up. Uh, he tells me that this footage was processed through Alice Vision. I've never used Alice Vision before. Go check it out, I'll put a link below. There's one more thing that I noticed. Let's go and take a look at the geometry itself. If we click on the geometry there, we can see that it's rotated 90 degrees. When I get geometry from a client, I align everything to that geometry. But since I'm not getting paid for this job, I'm going to clean it up a bit. <laughs> So let's go to the geometry folder here and we'll find my rebuilt geometry, funky drone, p-scan version 02, 25 unrecognized elements. It's fine. Do you want to strip the normals? Yes, because it's going to uh, reduce the number of generated vertices from a giant amount to a slightly less giant amount. Uh, there, so there's my geometry, and you can see it lines up perfectly to the original geometry. It's just been called of a lot of the extraneous nonsense. Let's bring up the floating hierarchy view, and let's collapse this so we don't look at all the trackers. First thing I want to do is I'm going to change the color of this geometry to white, and I'm going to hide the original geometry. So that'll make it a little easier at least for us to see how well things line up. The other thing I want to do is I want to get rid of this lens distortion because we shouldn't be work like I've had clients long ago. People don't typically do this anymore. I see it every once in a while where people say, "Oh, you should undistort your footage before you do any tracking." Uh, this is a terrible idea. This is like color correction before you do your comp. <laughs> That's madness, unless you're working in music videos. Anybody who works in music videos knows what I'm talking about. But don't, don't color correct before your comp and don't undistort your footage before you do your tracking. All right, that said, rant over. Uh, let's go into the lens room. I'll hit lock on this just so we can see how well it lines up, but I'm going to go to Lens Workflow, and Synthize has a undo earlier run. So that's what we want to do. I'm going to hit OK, and oh, look at that. Oh, it's so beautiful. But you can still see things don't line up here. Things do not line up particularly well. We can see, like, this rock doesn't line up with the geometry. So we're going to fix that. So there's one more thing I want to talk about, and let's bring up the floating graph editor. Let's change the view of the graph editor to this view. We want to be in tracks mode. So when we look at the tracks mode, we can see these are a lot of auto tracks. Like these were automatically generated trackers from blips that were peeled. We see all these red marks. And what are those red marks? 
Those red marks come from when you hit track, clean up trackers. And when you see this little thing pop up, you've got bad frames selected. So you want to deal with the bad frames, which is good. But you've got clear set on the bad frames, which is fix bad frames by clearing the tracked location, leaving them enabled. So these trackers are all enabled, but they just don't have any tracking information there. That's what leaves you with these red lines. I'm not a big fan of that. When I get shots from people, the first thing I do is I pull up the graph editor and I look for things. This is actually part of the QC process internally. So I'm looking at this and you've got tracks here that like this track 384. Well, this tracker, let's go into the tracker view. This tracker, and we can see that that's this light blue color down here. What does that mean? Well, followed my 2D tracking tutorials, you know what it means. It means that that tracker right here, I'm gonna unlock the tracker so we can see, we can look at it. This is the tracker enabled button. The tracker's enabled, it's enabled, it's enabled, and oh, it's still enabled. And it doesn't have any tracking information at all. So that's not good. Uh, let's bring that floating graph editor back up and let's look at that again. So. Anytime I see these, this would get kicked back. I'd say you need to fix your 2D track. Make sure you, you lock your trackers, make sure you disable them when they are not visible, when they go off screen, whatever the case. So when I get shots from people to look at, sometimes I find it's best to just start from scratch, which is what we're gonna do right now. There's something else that I should talk about here. I'm running all of this on my new Apple M1 Mac Mini. So I'm running this with the new M1 Silicon. I've also gone back, if I go and look at Synthize here, about Synthize, I'm running version 1905. So I've had to revert back to Synthize 1905 because this is the last version that will run on these new M1 machines under Rosetta. Now, there's some, one other thing I need to tell you about this M1 machine. It's only got 16 gigs of RAM, and I just got rid of my 64 gig old tr Mac, trash can Mac Pro. Why would I get rid of a 64 gig machine and replace it with a 16 gig machine? Well, the M1 deals with RAM more efficiently and definitely, it, I, I kind of, I've had to think about RAM differently. and. In Synthize, you have to think about RAM a little more differently too. So there's something that you need to look at here. In the preferences, you've got, we're gonna do a little search for the word cache, and you're gonna see things like maximum RAM cache. I've set my maximum RAM cache down to one gigabyte. That seems crazy. I'm only caching one gigabyte of frames in RAM? Yes, I am. But in your folder presets, you have to look for disk cache. And, and typically this is, doesn't have a folder and, and typically disk cache is off by default. But if you give it a folder, then it will cache your images to disk in a .baff file, a baff file. So I've set this to there. And then once you've done that on a new scene, if you play it through, well, that, that just, <laughs> that didn't take long at all. So that cached everything to disk and now there's a bath file for that. Uh, I'm looking at the shot. Now, if you remember, it, there were a bunch of uh, points out on the water. We don't want points out on the water. And we don't want any points on this because the water is gonna be waving and, and so any little flotation device could be moving around. We don't want any of that. So let's go into the roto masking room. All right, let's play through that. Let's just make sure that that looks right. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I think we've cut out most of the offending areas of the frame. I like how it's kind of doing the worm or the, the whatever, the, the wave. First thing I have to do though, is that right now this mat is a garbage mat and we don't want it to be a garbage mat. We want this to actually be 
what we're going to include, not what we're going to exclude. So we're going to change this to camera 01. Now, every blip that appears in that roto shape will be valid. So the next thing we have to do is we have to go to the features tab and we have to go to advanced and we have to change a few things here. Again, I, I'm a huge fan of powers of two. So I'm going to change the small to eight and the big to 16. Uh, and we're going to set our maximum tracker count to 277. The maximum tracker count default is 120. And that's just a generic number. So if you have a shot that's a thousand frames long and the camera is whipping all over the place, 120 is not gonna be enough. At the same time, if your shot is 5,000 frames long and the camera is doing this really slow dolly move, well, then 100 trackers is probably way more than enough. So on shots like this, where the motion is just kind of, you know, average motion, we're gonna call this average motion. I'm gonna say like one tracker per frame-ish. So that's why I set my maximum tracker count to 277. This is something that over time you'll get a feel for. Let's do blips all frames. All right. Oh wow, that was pretty fast. All right, so now we've done our blips. Those happen very quickly. And I'm gonna hit peel all. And if I go into my floating hierarchy view, we're now going to see, oh look, we have 277 trackers because this is just, there are so many trackable features in here. So that's cool. Now what I'm going to do is go to the solver room. I'm going to turn on calculate distortion and I'm just gonna hit go. Cool. Uh, I'm gonna scrub through. I don't see, I, I see one tracker down here that's kind of funky. That's out in the water, I don't want that. My roto wasn't quite robust enough. I've got a couple others too down here, like that, get rid of that, that. So anything that's on a reflective surface or where the water might be undulating, where the tracker is not totally rigid, we're gonna get rid of that. All right, now I'm going to hit, I probably should have done this in reverse order, but uh, I'm going to go to clean up trackers. I am gonna select bad frames. I want the bad frames not to be part of the new refined solution, but I'm gonna make this disabled. Yeah, we'll clear all blips because we're not gonna use the blips again. And it just, they just take up a lot of memory. So I'm gonna hit fix. It's gonna kill a bunch of trackers. My error histogram has kind of evened out a bit down here. I'm gonna just hit go again. I'm gonna leave this on automatic. Now our error has dropped to 0 0.275. So we can assume that this is a pretty accurate track. Let's import our geometry. We're going to import our new geometry, which will be in the common folder. Project files, geometry, funky drone, pscan version 02. Hit open on that. 25 unrecognized elements, strip the normals. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so now this just comes in. It's not aligned to anything. This is where the fun begins. Let's change this to camera and perspective. So over here, we have a perspective view. You rotate around that. Let's change the color of this, by the way. That's gonna be important. We can either change it here or we could have just changed it here. Okay, let's go back into the tracker room. So what I wanna do here is I wanna get an initial alignment just so we're kind of in the ballpark just to see how well this worked out. Just the track without any anchoring of our 2D trackers to our geometry. So how do we do that? We're gonna do that with the pinning tool. I'm going to say view, and we're gonna say solid meshes off, and I'm gonna bring up the pinning tool. Select our geometry. I want to pin the whole scene. And if we see in the 
quad perspective, right now our, our point cloud and our camera is the whole scene. It's not including the geometry. So with the pinning toolbar, I'm gonna say create edit pins, pin the whole scene and the field of view is fixed because we did a solve. So we're gonna assume that this field of view is pretty accurate. So let's find some features on here and start lining them up. Let's zoom in here and look at what we can see. I'm gonna leave these three windows open so that you can see what's happening to the scene as we start pinning. All right, there's our little dome. So I'm gonna put a pin here I'm gonna drag this whole thing over. Now look at what's happening in the upper left, in the uh, front view, um, and in the left view. Like all of our point cloud is moving, the camera's moving, it's all moving together. So let's get that kind of lined up. Th this gets a little tricky here. Uh, I also believe that um, our clipping plane is clipping off some of the geometry in the background. How do I fix the clipping plane? Very easy way to do that is just go into the solver room and set your world size to a bigger number. Look at that. The other thing I'm gonna to want to do is, now that I've made my scene size bigger, well, Synthize scales everything up in the way it redraws. So let's go to Edit, Scene Settings, and change our tracker size to, set it to one. That'll be good. Okay, so now we've pinned that dome, we can see that this parapet uh, right here, is that a parapet? I believe so. I believe that's the name for such a thing. I'm gonna drag that up here and it's gonna kind of make everything go cockamamie, which is okay. Let's find another feature over on, the, on this side down here. Oftentimes you can just grab something randomly. And now we can just visually like line this up to the rocks down there. We can always delete that pin later, but we can see up at the top these holes in the, the that's a parapet. We can see this feature is kind of lined up, so I'm going to drag that over a little bit like that. And I'm going to get just generally a decent alignment on some of these things. But, but a lot of this stuff in the background is not lining up. Like I think that this probably belongs over here, like that. But once I start doing that, once I start dragging things around like that, oftentimes with geometry like this, it can become very confusing. You can get very disoriented. So what I'm doing here is just trying to align things as best I can. What's the next thing we're gonna do? We're going to find some features and see how well this lines up. It's better, but no, it's like you can see when I pinned it, I pinned it on like this frame here, which is frame 1277. Oftentimes what I'll do is I'll say notes. So I'll go to the notes editor. You can only do that on a Mac, by the way. You can only go to help and search for things up here and then it'll show you where they are in these pull-down menus. So if you're on a PC, uh, that notes editor will be under window notes editor. So you bring up the notes editor and you just go type your note in here, pinning frames. Uh, and this is 1277. So I just keep an eye on what frames I've been pinning. And I want this to go begin at frame 1001 because you can have the notes turn on and turn off in sections of the shot but I want this one to be on the whole time. So beginning and that looks like it's gonna be on the whole time. So I just close that. Here's my note. And the reason that I put that note in there is because if I go to another frame and I decide to repin the shot, like here, and I say that actually belongs there and some of these features should really be more like this and that goes there. So as soon as I start pinning like this, I'm gonna now say pinning frames. I'm gonna add another frame here. Let's say that was frame 1001. As soon as I do that and I go to frame 1277, what happened to all my pins? So all my pins are gone. 
That's what happens when you pin on different frames, it doesn't maintain your pinning history. And you just keep that in mind. Let's get this aligned to our shot. And the, one of the best ways to do that is to just look at features in the geometry and then look at features in the photography. I'm gonna set this to camera in perspective. In this window, I'm going to say view show meshes off. I only wanna see the mesh over in the perspective view over on this side. Let's find identifiable features in the, in the mesh and in the geometry that are not necessarily covered by our auto tracks. We do have a couple auto tracks though I think that we could use. Like this auto tracker right here probably is, um, it's probably that little weird thing. So if I take this feature and I go down here into this uh, menu and I hit place, with that tracker selected, I can now click right there and say, that's gonna be my seed point where I wanna lock that tracker. And not only does it create the seed point, it gives it a location and it locks it. So that's cool. Let's find some other features. This little dimple right here, that little dimple is this little patch of greenery. So I'm gonna add a tracker. Let me get rid of my node settings. Now we're gonna do some supervised tracking. So let me drop a tracker right on here. We'll set this to eight and eight. Close this down a little bit. I'm also gonna set the tracker to be an RGB tracker. Yeah, that's fine. Let's hit the five key, keep that centered. Great, so that tracker is good. I don't see any problem with that tracker. I have QC'd the tracker. It doesn't have any bumps in it or any glitches. All right, so what do I do? I lock the tracker. So what do we do now? Um, we have this tracker here. I'm going to click that, the place button is already clicked. So I'm just gonna drop a tracker right on there. And you can do this right in this view. You don't need to orbit around or do any nonsense like that. All right, let's look at some other features that we might get. We know we have this dome and there's the dome, this, this uh, piece of part of the geometry, it looks kind of mushy. It's not LiDAR. It's a photo scan, this is all photogrammetry, but I want to hit the five key again, just so we can drag around with impunity. I'm going to put a tracker here, just below the little point. Let's shrink that down a bit. I know that this tracker is gonna have problems. You're gonna start seeing stuff occur in the background and then the tracker is gonna go crazy. So I'm just gonna let it go for now. But eh, yeah, so in this case, with this tracker, let's set it to track, stop on auto key, so that it automatically stops on the auto keys. I'm also going to bring up one of my favorite windows, the floating simul track, love this. I've noticed this on my um, M1 Mac mini, that sometimes if, if the display is just so, you'll, it'll glitch out a little bit. Not gonna worry about that just get my simul track window looking good. We are doing well. Let's go back over here and with place activated, I'm going to now drop a tracker right there. So now I've got three trackers, I think, placed. You can do that, you can check that with the floating constrained points. You can see we have three points that have been constrained. Let's find another feature that we can easily identify. I actually like that feature right there, right at the bottom of that turret. Yeah, so I like that. Um, let's, let's see if we can find a good place on the geometry to place it. The geometry seems to be a little over, and so I'm gonna place my, my anchor point just a little farther in to pull it out when we redo the solve. Are there any other features on here that we can get? I just wanna get a little bit more anchored to reality. I think, um, I don't wanna to put too many features too close together, but there are some that just seem like, you know, easy. This, this feature right here, that's that little notch. I can, I can just tell. Okay, 
five. Great. That's as long as that lifetime is going to get. Lock that tracker and I'm going to go place. I'm going to place that right in that little notch. Cool. What else we got? I'll tell you what else we got. How about this corner right here? Yeah, that's good. I'm, I'm going to say that's good. Now on my geometry, there's a uh, one of these parapets and then um, the second one there. So if we look on the geometry in the photo scan, we have one, two. So that means that this we're going to place right about there. These are never going to be perfectly accurate with like photo scan geometry like this. With LiDAR, mm, it's like bang right on the money. But uh, photogrammetry doesn't give you quite those quite those results. Now, I have set all of these anchor points. How many do I have? Floating constraint points. One, two, three, four, five, six. I have six points. So let's, let's give this a shot. Uh, let's just drag that off the screen. Go to the solver. I'm gonna leave this on automatic, but I'm gonna click constrain. And in my lens settings, I'm gonna make sure that this is fixed and unknown. So it's gonna calculate a new lens for me. So here we go. Let's go to the solver. We're just gonna hit go and cross our fingers. Okay, hope it didn't go terribly bananas. Let's go back to the tracker room. Oh yeah, look at that. Now our geometry is lining up, oh, so much better. Let's just scrub through. That's a much, much tighter fit, but we can make it better still. And this is one of those things that you can do. We haven't spent that much time on this, but if we really wanted to make it super tight, then we just would do this process iteratively. So let's take a look at what we have here. There's a tracker on this right there. How long is its lifetime? It's pretty good, actually. Yeah, that tracker's really pretty good. It's got some noise in it. Oh, actually, it's not the noise here. Let's hit Shift-5 and let's stay locked on our solved point. So yeah, that, that's, that's good. Um, that looks, like I said earlier, like it belongs right there. So place is still selected. I'm gonna put that right there. This corner belongs right there. Now, do we have a tracker there? Let's take a look. We don't, we don't have a tracker right there. So I think we should just track that. I know it's gonna be a little tricky, but we're gonna do it. And then that's gonna make our track even better. Done. Let's make sure that that tracker QC is good. Looks great, looks good, looks good. Wonderful. Lock now with place selected. I'm gonna place that point right there. And now I'm going to go back to the solver and I'm gonna hit go. With automatic, I'm not doing this as re refined solves like I normally would, but it's all good. Yeah, that now lines up, look at that. So there. That's how you do it. That geometry is now aligned. We could probably get, you know, this, look at that, that even lines up kind, kind of perfectly. You could do more and you can just keep going with this. That's awesome. So now I'm going to go back to part two of how to process my set surveys. And I'll see you soon.